is let's go over the main support vector machine formulation. Now from last time, we know that we are gonna maximize one over that norm of lambda, such that all the unnormalized margins are at least one. Okay, that's the same thing as minimizing a half times that norm of lambda squared. Okay, why is that? It's because maximizing one over something is the same as minimizing that same thing. And then the squared and the norm, the, sorry, the, the one half and the squared don't actually influence the solution to the problem, right? If you minimize the norm, that's gonna give you the same thing as if you minimize the norm squared. And then same thing if you multiply the one half in front. It doesn't, it doesn't actually impact the solution. It's just for convenience because we're gonna be taking derivatives. And so you can see how the one half and the squared would be kind of helpful when we take derivatives. Okay, now um, what I did to get from this, the second line to the third line is I just put all the terms from the constraints all the way on the kind of less than side. And then all of a sudden, we should get really happy because we notice that our, our uh, optimization problem is now in the form of exactly what we studied in the convex optimization lecture. So here, what that means is that the KKT conditions are going to hand us the result on a silver platter. Well, maybe it's not quite so easy. We still have to do a little work. <laughs> but in any case, um, we can just run, use the machinery that we developed in, in convex optimization lecture. Now, you'll notice here that all of the constraints are inequality constraints. There are no equality constraints. So there are no H terms. And so in the Lagrangian, you're only going to expect alphas and there's not going to be any betas because all of those terms don't exist in this in this problem. Cool. So I formed the Lagrangian there and it's exactly what you'd expect, right? There's, there's nothing, nothing difficult about this. Okay, so now I have the first of the KKT conditions, Lagrangian stationarity. This thing is like a set of ion cannons against our giant alien enemies, okay? So this is really, really powerful. Now, I'm going to take the gradient of the Lagrangian with respect to that vector lambda. If you feel more comfortable, um, you can actually just take single derivatives. You can say, I'm going to take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to one lambda j at a time. That's totally fine. Cool. And then the other thing I have to do is take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the lambda zero. And then um, again, set all these things equal to zero. Okay, so take that derivative or set, take that gradient, set it equal to zero. Cool. Then same thing here. Great. So I have these two very, very powerful equations that are gonna help us out a lot. Then I have my constraints. The alphas again have to be non-negative because otherwise, again, the Lagrangian is not a good lower bound for the primal objective. And then we have primal feasibility, which of course is just that um, all of those unnormalized margins have to be at least one. And then the complementary slackness condition. This thing is like an infinitron laser against our alien enemies. Okay, cool. So we have um, all of these equations and I'm just gonna um, put a box around them just to know that you know these, this is our arsenal of weapons and we're gonna use these things to, to smash this, <laughs> this, this equation until we get the solution. All right, so let's expand the Lagrangian here. And um, so all I did was expand terms. There's nothing, nothing in here that's um, complicated there. And then I'm gonna use this first KKT condition because you see I have this sum over here and so what I'm going to end up with it in this term is it's negative norm of lambda squared. That's what it is. Okay, cool. So I did that. And then what I noticed is that another one of my terms has this sum in it, which is zero. So the whole term goes away. I can just knock that guy right out of the sky. All right, that whole term goes to zero. Good, so now um, the only thing I really need to do then uh, right now is to notice that the first two terms are actually, you know, they, they add up and they're just uh, negative one half norm of lambda squared. Okay, so that's that. So that's what's left of the Lagrangian. We're getting closer. 
But I'm going to do a little side calculation here and just expand that um, the first uh, term there um, by just plugging in this uh, Lagrangian stationary condition there. So expand that out. And then what the, the important thing to notice here is that um, there's one of those sums, namely the J sum, can travel through all the way to the end and can, um, in fact, you, you can see that this is actually an inner product of Xi and Xk uh, at the end there. Okay, so that J sum is going to turn into that dot product. So it's only changing notation and that's it. All right, we're plugging that guy in. There's our Lagrangian. And now it's only in terms of alphas, which are the dual variables, so that's good. All right, so this is the main SVM dual formulation. So it's maximized Lagrangian with respect to alpha. That Lagrangian looks like this. And then the only constraints I'm keeping are that the alphas are non-negative and, the, um, and the, the, sub, the one of the conditions that we derived from um, Lagrangian stationarity. Now, the other terms will, the other terms are important. The, the other constraints, I'm sorry, the other constraints, they are important and they will come back, they will come back to help us. They're gonna help us figure out the, the solutions to the primal problem. But this is all we need to solve the dual problem. Okay, so how do we solve that? Um, oh, by the way, this formulation, this is all due, this whole thing is due to Vladimir Vapnik. He's amazing. I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of Vladimir. I think he's, you know, he's like the, the father of, of statistical learning theory and the, the inventor of support vector machines. And I have some really interesting, funny stories about um, Vapnik that I will tell you, maybe not now. <laughs> anyway, so, there are two ways to solve this problem. The first is to use a generic quadratic programming solver. This is a quadratic program because the alphas are multiplied by each other, so it's quadratic. Um, so you could take this thing and pump it into a generic solver and tell it, oh, this is a QP. You, you know how to solve QPs, you solve it. And then the other way to solve it is to use a specialized solver like SMO, which I'll talk about in a later lecture. But in any case, um, you, um, you should assume this problem right now is solved and that we now have the, dual, the optimal dual variables alpha. And from there, later on, we will use those alphas to go back and find the optimal lambdas. And of course, you can use those lambdas to make predictions. I should note, though, before I end this video, that some SVM solvers are not good. So if you try to solve this problem with like the sklearn um, package, um, it just even for like simple two-dimensional problems it has a lot of trouble with it so the choice of solver that you make for this particular problem actually really really matters in your ability to solve it quickly okay cool so in the next lecture again i'm going to talk about um the, kind of the implications for the solutions of this problem <laughs>